got here early at 10 o'clock and saw the entertainment, I wouldn't have to be doing this now. So that's these people's fault. Are there any people here from Rush County right now? Raise your hands. Good. Okay. Here's, here's the story. Now, this happened to, to me a long time ago. It's, uh, when I was a senior in high school. Uh, if anybody knows Rush County, I attended Milroy High School, and this was during my senior year. I had a very, very good friend who's named Dean. And at the end of uh, the, the class day, he and I would always go back to his house. And his father, Landon, had a barber shop in, inside his home. And uh, Dean had two little brothers, and you know, the family were usually there. So on this particular day, when uh, Dean and I got back to his, back to his house, uh, he was responsible for doing some chores, which included he had a couple dogs and a couple cats. He would have to, of course, tend to them, take care of them. Well, on this particular day, Dean took care of the dogs. He couldn't find one of the cats. And Dean had, we looked all over the place for him. We just could not find the cat at all. So finally, his little brother Troy came over. He took Dean by the hand because he wasn't really, wasn't really talking at the time. Took him by the hand. I was following him. We went inside the kitchen. Troy opened up the refrigerator. And there laying on the bottom shelf of the refrigerator was the cat. Unbelievable. Right. Unbelievable. Cat lover, right? And... We, we, we didn't panic because we just really didn't know what to do. Well, since Landon, Dean's dad, had the barbershop in, uh, in his home, you know, Dean went out real quick and said, Dad, you got to come here and look at this. And, Dean, and Landon came in, looked at the cat, and the first thing he did was he picked up the telephone. He called Doc Coon, which was right down, right down on Main Street. And Landon said, Doc Coon, said, we've got a problem here. Our, one of the kids put this cat in the refrigerator, and it's laying there stiff. It's not moving. So... Doc, and this is, this is kind of how I heard the conversation. And I heard Landon talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's, here's kind of how the conversation went. Doc asked Landon, he said, do you have an eyedropper? And Landon said, yeah, I've got an eyedropper. He says, okay. He says, do you have any gas? I said, yeah, i got some gas. He says, well, go out, take the eyedropper, get about three drops of gas in the eyedropper, and come back and pick up the phone. So Landon goes to the garage, I drop her all this, gets a gas, okay, Ray comes back. He says, okay, now what? What am I gonna do with this? He says, take the cat out, you lay it down, you lift up its head a little bit, and you drop those three drops of gas in its mouth. That doesn't sound right, does it? Not to me, no. But Landon, knowing Doc Coon, he's a vet, he says, okay, I'll do it. So Landon lifted the cats, did exactly what he did, dropped the three uh, dropper, eye droppers of, ga of gas in it, and the cat laid there for about 20 seconds, and all of a sudden, the cat jumped up. It jumped up and it ran around the table about four times, and it fell over. Yeah. No, nope, ran out of gas. Ah!